Okay, so the features of sensor networks. So what are the enabling features uh, that you need in order to deploy such a network? They have to be inexpensive. The devices have to be cheap. What that means is you don't care if you lose them. So in other words, it's okay to toss them off the side of your truck. You don't care where they land, and you don't care if they're lost, and you don't care if they break. What that also means is that if some of them, if let's say the batteries die over time or the devices fail, um, all you do is you drive your truck back out there and keep throwing, keep throwing sensors out. <laughs> Throwing sensors to find your missing sensors. Exactly, that's right, that's right. And then sensors to find the sensors that find the sensors. That's so, um, right. So um, they have to be robust. The devices themselves have to be reasonably rugged, and the network as a whole has to be taller and just failure. So in other words, uh, if you, if in my truck example, you're throwing sensors out the side of the road, you throw out 100 of them, uh, it shouldn't be necessary that all 100 work properly. You should have, you should have some failure rate uh, that's allowed. Um, a, key, um, a key feature here is distributed. So hierarchy is permitted to some degree in sensor networks, but uh, for the most part, these, these networks should be self-organizing. In other words, um, there, can, there can be more powerful devices in your sensor network, but it must be possible to discover those. Uh, those devices should themselves organize themselves into a network and so on. So there's no, um, the idea is uh, self-organization and, and no real central point of failure, yes? This is a backtrack, but um, we were talking about CDRM, so that once the sensor The idea would be, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if they actually did any analysis, but what you would have to do is you'd have to have enough so that um, um, an individual device would not necessarily always need a road to the edge, but you would have to have a road to the edge often enough that the data was collected. Is this the information between each other, or is it here it was probably going to work to have to get to? Right, so in the, in the end, uh, the, the information has to get somewhere else. So there are applications where there's no data sync. In other words, uh, all the processing happens inside, uh, inside the network, but those are usually um, things like uh, fire detection. So in that, in that case, there's only one really important message and everyone decides amongst themselves what, uh, whether that condition exists or not. In collection of huge amounts of data, um, generally that data has, is going somewhere where that data will be digested and processed. So, uh, so for uh, when so sensors uh, actually uh, deal with each other to like uh, they, uh, yes yes absolutely. Is, is, so is it possible to have uh, security with a sensor network at all? That's a huge problem. So, uh, I mean, if you can throw out, if you can drive down the road throwing out sensors, uh, your enemy can do the same. So, um, I like a good example is like if you're lying, I think it's even to like, change the sensors that's right. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> what happens. But, uh, <laughs> so, uh, so uh, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's a big problem. There's a lot of, there's a lot of work. <laughs> Uh, the, uh, the tendency in these things is toward less secure, what they're doing is uh, so They are working towards the security of that? Yeah. yeah. One more so if, we, if, we, if we are able to get the security, then we can actually have uh, our mobile networks converted into sensor networks. So we wouldn't need base stations. Uh, Correct. So, um, 
I mean, in that's in fact that's the direction they're going. That, that's you want to have a 4G technology. So that's one of the directions. Okay. Where uh, all all the all the stations are basically routers, and you can do multi pop This is actually called a mesh network, basically. If uh, if enough people get together, then at the I mean, there's a network connection at the edge, and uh, you you roam anywhere within that network, and you're still have a connection back to that edge, that, that, that backbone, that's, that's a mesh network. And that's, that's sort of the idea. Okay, um, so inexpensive, robust, distributed. Um, the main, uh, another main feature of a wireless sense network is ubiquitous. In other words, it has to be, a, it, 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 has to, it has to work everywhere. You have to get as close as you can to the, to the uh, to the uh, um, phenomenon you're sensing. And I guess the, the example there would be, let's say, a weather station. So historically, weather stations are big, huge deals that um, are in one location and basically can tell you with extreme precision what the temperature and wind speed and whatnot are right there. But if you're a few kilometers away, I mean, it'll be approximately the same, but it won't be exactly the same. So what you could do is you could replace a weather station with a thousand temperature, humidity, wind sensors scattered over a wide area. So that's that's the idea, ubiquity. Okay, so the, the research challenges, and this is still an emerging area. Challenges. Okay, so someone mentioned this a second ago, power management. So, um, I mean, you you have to be okay with losing devices, but uh, you don't necessarily want to be going out there daily throwing out sensors. So you should expect that a properly functioning device should last a, a, a reasonably long time. And uh, the idea that most people have is that months to years is not a reasonable time. So in other words, you have to aggressively optimize your power. You can, you, there should be enough onboard uh, intelligence that the device can itself recognize when an important event is taking place and only sense those times and only transmit that data. However, that sort of conflicts with the next one, low complexity. Um, Part of power management, I mean, uh, processors are power hungry. So part of power management is reducing the complexity of the device. Uh, another issue is that, uh, I mean, uh, devices are shrinking all the time, but in order to get into a small package, you can't, uh, you can't solve highly computationally complex problems. You can't run MATLAB on a, on a small sensor, in other words. Um, the, uh, the algorithms and the protocols and the capabilities of these devices have to take into account that they're small, they, they can't run terribly complex programs, although they, they can do straightforward signal processing and things like that. Uh, organization. So that ties in with distributed, um, uh, distributed everything. So in other words, if uh, as um, devices join the network, um, how, are, how do they discover services? How does the network discover them? Uh, how, how, are, uh, how are packets routed from uh, individual sensors through this large, dynamic, constantly changing network uh, to, uh, to wherever the data needs to go? And that also ties in with the, other, the last challenge, which is routing. So once you've got the organization down, how do you uh, how do you route packets? So these three problems are protocol issues. Uh, excuse me. These three problems are solved by, uh, or we're going to discuss, are solved by a protocol called 802.15.4. And this problem we're going to discuss, this is still um, kind of an open research problem, but we're hopefully, next class, if we have time, we're going to discuss some approaches to routing.